guys, The Black Critic Guy here with the second top 10 list for the week. This one being on the top 10 films I dislike that everyone loves. Similar to yesterday's video, I'll be detailing my reasons as to why I don't like these movies that have been critically acclaimed or beloved by many people. So, enough beating around the bush, let's get to the list. Starting off our list at number 10, there Will Be Blood. A critically acclaimed film starring one of the greatest actors of all time, Daniel Day-Lewis, and is by far the most boringest movie I've ever seen. Like, I could not, for the love of God, like this movie. And I've always had a hard time liking Paul Thomas Anderson films, this being no exception. I mean, the story I feel like goes nowhere. I never really got attached to the characters. I mean, they're all just a bunch of assholes, and I never understood how this film is so critically acclaimed. I mean, this was considered one of the best films of the decade. Of the decade! What is so great about it? What is so groundbreaking about There Will Be Blood? To this day, I have yet to see what everyone keeps making a fuss about. At the end of the day, There Will Be Blood just felt like a really pretentious film made by a very talented, no doubt about it, but equally pretentious director. Oh, you see? I look up, I look down. I look up, I look down. At my number nine choice, Vertigo, which was recently voted by this prestigious film journal called Sight and Sound, which only gets together every 10 years, that Vertigo was the greatest film of all time. Of all time. And although I do admire some of the camera work and visuals that are in the film, and the story is somewhat interesting, the rest of it is just so boring. I mean, it is daunting to sit through, and time and time again, whenever I take a film class or whenever I go to a film club, they always bring up Vertigo as being this landmark of a film, and I just never got it. It just is so boring and daunting to sit through. The characters, for me personally, are just uninteresting. Some of them are just Mary Sue's, and I just never was attached to the story. And Alfred Hitchcock, I'm not going to deny his greatness, but... He's never really been a personal favorite director of mine. I admire his work and all, it's just, he's not like, if I were to make a list, which I have, of top 10 directors, he would not make the cut. I feel like there have been other directors before him and after him that do better work than he does. I just never understood what made this film so much better than every other film out there. That is a bold statement to make. You better blow my pants off, and the film just never does that. I just found it to be a very adequate film for its time. And I love James Stewart, he, he's a great actor, he's a great guy, you know, oh, uh, Sally, Sally, what are you doing over there? I, I love making impersonations of him, he's a great guy, he's just, he's not enough to sell the movie as being great. Man, I could just feel the film fan lynch mob standing right outside my door. I'll be with you guys in a sec. Now my number eight choice is a rather easy target as most people already hate this film, but it's still widely popular among the female demographic and is considered the go-to standard for most romance films, and that is The Notebook. When I first saw The Notebook after all the hype and all the craze and how much people were saying how great it is, I watched it and said, this? Is the movie that everyone was talking so much about? I mean, it's such a boring, by the numbers, bland romance story where this girl just can't seem to make up her fucking mind of which guy she wants to be with. She wants to be with Ryan Gosling or does she want to be with James Marston, who, in all honesty, is a really nice guy and very supportive, and yet she continuously just leaves this guy hanging to hang out with Ryan's sexy Gosling. And as a guy that gets friend zone, constantly as well. I really empathize more with James Marston and I fucking hated uh, Ryan Gosling, who is the supposed to be the main character you're supposed to root for, so there's that. But I never understood its wide appeal, but again, it is aimed towards a female demographic, so they ate that shit up and they love it and that's all fine. If you want to love that movie, great. But I personally feel like there are way better romance films out there that appeals to both demographics, both male and female can like it together. With The Notebook, it is completely one-sided and only appeals to one demographic, the female one. Just like Twilight, kicking names and taking ass is my number seven choice, Kick-Ass. 
When this movie came out back in 2010, everybody was going crazy about it. And I didn't watch it until like its third week of release. So when I was going in to see it, I was so excited, I was so pumped. Like everyone was talking about this movie so much and how great it is. And after watching it, I was like, really? I mean, yeah, Hit Girl was awesome. Love Hit Girl. But the rest of the movie, I mean, oh. Oh, okay. Now, I can't really say that I hated the film or completely destroyed, as there were a lot of good qualities to the film. The action was fun and it kept me entertained. I was never really bored. I just wouldn't consider it to be one of my favorite movies of all time, or even consider it to be one of the greatest superhero films of all time. Kick-Ass is fine and all, but I just can't sing the film's praises. In fact, I really enjoyed the second Kick-Ass more than I enjoyed the first Kick-Ass. And you'll be hearing about that one coming soon. Do you see that? Because I do. I see terrible movies in your future. Is my number six choice, The Sixth Sense. And yes, I did put this at the number six spot on purpose. Now you all know my feelings about he who shall not be named at this point, but I can't deny that the guy has made some good movies. In fact, in my opinion, he's only made one good movie, and that's Unbreakable, which I personally own, and I still stand by my opinion, saying it's one of the best superhero depictions in a film I've ever seen, and I, it had such a really good twist. But when it came to The Sixth Sense, I never understood why it was so goddamn popular. And I guess you could say that the hype really killed it for me, as most of the films on this list probably did. Like, it was so overhyped that the time that I watched it, it just never lived up to the expectation and all that build up to this point. I mean, people always talked about The Sixth Sense and the big twist at the end of Bruce Willis being dead the whole time. And if you are surprised by that, where the fuck have you been? At the end of the day, guys, I personally don't see why everybody and their mother praises him for this particular film when it carries all the same issues that we have with his current films. I'd rather they praise him for being the guy that gave us Unbreakable, which was a wholly original idea and highly underrated. In fact, one of these days, I'm gonna make a top 10 underrated films list, that one will be on there. Or hell, Signs is even a better movie than The Sixth Sense. Why does he get so much props for The Sixth Sense? Why? Because he was nominated for almost, what, three Oscars for that film, which is freaking ridiculous. Oh, Oscars, man. What were you thinking? Making us afraid to go back to sleep, oh my god. Not is my number five choice, Paranormal Activity. Much like The Sixth Sense, I personally felt like the hype killed this movie for me. Like everybody was talking about how scary it is. Oh my god, it's one of the best horror films I've seen in years. You gotta go see it, go see it, go see it. And so I finally saw it on DVD with the lights off at night and I was like, man, this is really boring. Like, nothing is really happening in this film. Like, oh, that's a cool little shadow thing. And, oh, loud noises. And she's standing creepily at the camera. The only scene that kind of got me is when she was dragged off of the bed. That was, that was pretty scary. Or the final scene where she's, like, standing in front of the camera and goes, Rah! that was pretty scary. But other than that, the most of the film was just, like, this guy's a freaking asshole, his girlfriend's freaking stupid, and I, why is this film getting so much hype? What I find so funny though is that this particular film actually made me want to go watch The Blair Witch Project for the first time, which is the predecessor to Paranormal Activity, and I was more afraid of The Blair Witch Project than I was of Paranormal Activity. The woods fucking scare me. Like, this movie, no. I, I slept soundly that night. To me, the Paranormal Activity films are just like Saw, minus the inventive death traps, the compelling story, and the very interesting and awesome villain Jigsaw. And continuing down the train of films that were way too overhyped, we got my number four choice, District 9. Just like all the other films on this list, Everyone and their father kept talking about how great this film is and how original it is and how it's one of the greatest sci-fi films ever made. You guys gotta go see it. And then I went and saw it and I was just like, what is so great about it, guys? Like, what the fuck? Why do you keep doing this to me? Stop overhyping movies that aren't as great as you're making them out to be. I was sitting there 
waiting for that moment where, yes, my mind is completely blown, this is one of the greatest films I've ever seen, there was never a moment, never a moment, and the main character is so fucking annoying. Like, how did people not even mention the fact that this guy is so annoying? Yeah, he goes through an interesting metamorphosis in the literal and figurative sense, but it just doesn't make him interesting. And many of you may say, maybe you don't understand it. I understood what the message of the movie was. This guy, the director, whose name is escaping me, I don't know why, oh, Neil Blomkamp, all of his films have some sort of political or social commentary in them. In this one, it was dealing about apartheid, but instead of like, you know, blacks versus whites, they made it humans versus aliens. Is it a bad film? Of course it's not. It's well shot, well acted, and has some few interesting scenes here and there. But I just wouldn't put it on a list of the greatest sci-fi films in the past 20 years. I mean, it's, it's decent, it's fine, it's just nothing to really run home and tell everybody about. Hell, I thought Elysium was a much better sci-fi film than District 9. Review, rant, repeat with my number three choice, Edge of Tomorrow. Everybody loved this movie last year. Like they were hailing it as not only one of the best films of the summer, but one of the best films of the year. And it went completely over my head. I still to this day do not see why everyone praises this movie so much. With this recycled storyline, which is the point, I get it, it's just that in those repeated cycles, you just lose that sense of tension. Like, I don't really worry for the main character because he's just gonna repeat the same day. I never felt like he ever created bonds with characters, even though you kind of see him feeling like he created bonds with characters, but it was just never shown. It was never implemented. His team, a lot of interesting, they were very interesting characters. It's just, you learn nothing about them. And when he tells them things that he learned about them, I'm like, when did you have the time to learn all this about them when you never really talked to any of them? It just, I don't understand why this film is so popular. It's not a god awful film, it's just a really forgettable film. Like, I barely remember much about this film. You can sing this film's praises until you're all blue in the face. I just don't understand its wide appeal, and I'm not gonna apologize for it. Giant robots fighting giant monsters, you would think I would fall in love with this film. But sadly, I didn't. And that's my number two choice, Pacific Rim. This was actually my most anticipated film of 2013. I could not wait to see it. And every time I saw a trailer, I just got even more excited. I, I think I got so excited one time, I jizzed my pants. I'm like, oh my god, Guillermo del Toro. Yes, you're giving me exactly what I wanted. And then I went to see the film and it was such a huge letdown. I remember after the film, I was so devastated and heartbroken. My friends turned to me saying, what the hell are you talking about, Tony? That movie was awesome. And I'm like, no, it is not. Yeah, the, the giant robots fighting giant monsters, that did look cool. But that wasn't even, that did not make up the entire movie. What made up the entire movie were all these bland and generic characters with weak backstory and development that I didn't give a shit about, a story that was incoherent in many places, and just... Oh, what a letdown. And the fact that, you know, only one of the robots could ever really defeat uh, Kaiju, and they had like a plethora of other cool robots, they just squandered all of this potential. And it's getting a sequel, and I'm hoping they rectify all the problems that they made with the first one. Make the characters interesting. Make them so that we can be invested in their journey. Show other freaking Jaegers fighting. Don't just make a gypsy danger coming in to save the, save the day, you know? I wanna see other awesome robots. Okay, let's talk about my number one. Now, this film may not be extremely beloved by everybody, but at least within the film community, it has been widely considered the greatest film ever made, or at least the greatest American film ever made. And if you are a film person, you probably know what film I'm talking about. That's my number one choice, Citizen Kane. I remember watching AFI's Top 100 and even reading the list and every time it just, number one, Citizen Kane. And I remember I watched it back in 2009 to finally see what would, what it all was about. What is so great about this film? Maybe if I watch it, I'll understand it. And to this day, after watching it, and I only watched it once, I don't get it. I honestly don't get it. And that's it. I don't have a deep reason as to why 
I dislike it. I just don't see why it's considered the greatest film of all time. I mean, it's a it's a great film, yeah, for its time. It's solid, good camera work, inventive camera work, great acting. The story is very interesting. And the whole intrigue about what the hell is Rosebud, that was really good, although it was kind of, it was spoiled for me. So if you haven't seen it, I won't spoil it for you, but I just, why? Why is it so great? Why do we hail this movie so much compared to like The Godfather, which I personally feel like is the greatest movie of all time. It is so intriguing and has all the elements that not only makes it a critical darling, but it has wide mass appeal. Whereas Citizen Kane, I can see it being a critical darling, but I don't see it really grabbing an audience's attention. If you can't have both of them, then you're not going to be a great film. You can't just have one and be considered a great film. And that's the problem with Citizen Kane. It only has the critical aspect to it. Everyone who's a critic praises the film, but everyone that's part of the mainstream media or part of the audience crowd just like, eh, I don't see it. And that's why I don't get why Citizen Kane is one of the greatest films of all time. And it is the number one film that I dislike that everyone loves. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my list of the top 10 films that I dislike that everyone loves. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this like my last video, but just keep in mind, my opinions. And I would love to know what your thoughts are on this list. Did you agree with my choices? Did you disagree with them? Did you feel like I left any films out? And let me know what is a film that you completely disliked that everyone else seemed to really love. Comment below let me know. And it's got two more videos coming your way and a few Let's Plays as well so stay tuned for that and hopefully tomorrow an Al Noah Zero review. So until those videos come guys, if you would like to be a part of the Black Critic Crew and not miss out on a single awesome video on this channel, please hit that subscribe button below, like this video if you really enjoyed it, and I'm Tony Watt the second film critic aficionado, the Black Critic Guy. Till then, peace YouTube!